Every year in this course, I, I post all this stuff, like videos and practice exercises and practice exam questions, and yet people still come back to me and ask for more stuff. They say, give me more practice, which, you know, that, that is sort of a good thing if people want more programming practice, but I can only generate these things so fast. I can only come up with a few of these new exercises every time I do the course. I don't know, maybe I'm like losing my motivation? Maybe I'm getting old? I feel a bit guilty about that. Um, but fortunately, this year, I've got this brand new colleague who, who seems pretty eager to help everybody out. And maybe if I ask my new colleague nicely, or maybe if you ask them nicely, they might be able to generate as many practice exercises as you want. But I guess first I should ask my colleague to introduce itself. Can you introduce yourself? Of course, and I guess my new colleague's a little bit wordy. Hmm, there's a bunch of technical stuff happening here, but I'm sure this is a name that many of you have already heard. And if you've been paying attention to the media over the past, I don't know, like 10 months or, or a year, it's also a name that seems to strike fear into the hearts of many people. They seem to be worried that my new colleague here, who seems pretty friendly and collegial, is about to rise up and displace humans. And, I mean, to some extent, maybe that's not a bad thing, you know, maybe I can relax finally. Um, but on the other hand, I have a feeling that if you get to know ChatGPT, you might discover that not only is it not really a threat, I mean, that is, there are some things it's good at and there are some things it really isn't good at, but also it's a tool. And uh, if we think back to the era where, I don't know, the calculator was invented, I guess there might have been some kind of moral panic back then about, oh, if everybody starts carrying a calculator, nobody's going to learn arithmetic. But we still have to learn how to do arithmetic. I mean, we can use a calculator as a tool to help us, but we still need to know how the mathematical operations are done. And so we can ask my new colleague, ChatGPT, for help gener generating programming practice exercises, and that's great. We're using it as a tool. I, I obviously don't need to tell you that you shouldn't be asking my new colleague. You shouldn't be wasting my new colleague's valuable time asking it to do your assignments for you because, you know, bad things are going to happen if the work that you submit isn't your own work. But that doesn't mean you can't use this tool to your advantage for things like practice um, and also as a good way to learn how to interpret requirements. Because in this course, the exercises that I post and the assignments that you have to do are worded very technically. They're worried, worded in a very formal, rigorous way because, you know, it's important to me that you know what I'm asking you to do. But out there in the world, that isn't really how it works. Often when you're expected to perform some programming task, the requirements are sort of vague. Often you're given a prompt that doesn't really make that much sense. And you, the programmer, the developer, have to figure out what it means and come up with some sensible interpretation of it. So anyway, in this, the first week of a programming course, maybe we should start by asking my new colleague to generate us some programming exercises appropriate for this level of the course. And my hope in this sequence of videos is that I'm gonna keep asking ChatGPT to give me some exercises, and I'm just gonna try and do whatever exercises it suggests. So if it gives me bad suggestions, or if the suggestions don't make any sense, I'm just gonna have to work my way through that. And you might find the same thing if you ask ChatGPT for uh, practice exercises. If you ask it to help you, give you ideas for practice, you might discover that it sometimes gives you ideas that don't really make any sense. And it's up to you to turn those into something that helps you. And you know, that is sort of the way it is out there in the world. You don't usually have somebody generating very crisp and formally worded exercises for you to complete. So let's give it a try. I'm taking a C programming course. Um, this week, we are covering, I guess the topic for the first week is variables and types. And if you want a hint as to what to ask it about, if you want to know what topic to ask it for, just go take a look on Brightspace at whatever the name of this week's topic is. This week we're covering variables and types. Can you give me three programming exercises related to variables and types? Let's see what it can do. Of course, here are three exercises. All right, so we've got three exercises. They are exercise number one, temperature conversion. Write a program that takes an input in Celsius and converts it to Fahrenheit. 
Now, I sort of like this because, you know, I've been generating practice exercises for years. I never thought about this one because, I mean, maybe it's the privilege of, you know, having spent my life in Canada, but I'm used to working with temperature systems that are, you know, rational and make sense and are tied to uh, sort of immutable scientific properties, not weird, random, arbitrary, esoteric systems that are completely irrational in my mind. But it makes sense that there are people that use this system and they might want to convert between Celsius and Fahrenheit. And so not only is this a great practice exercise, it's actually a pretty practical problem to solve. Exercise two, triangle area calculation. So write a program that, given the base and height of a triangle, so measurements for the base and height, uh, compute the area of that triangle. And exercise number three, Create a program that converts an amount in U.S. dollars. Uh, okay, so my new colleague is clearly American. Create a program that converts an amount in U.S. dollars to another currency. Hmm. Um, and then it says prompt the user to enter an amount in U.S. dollars. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to break here and then I'm going to record a separate video for each of these three exercises. And if you want to, in the meantime, you might want to try out implementing all three of these. And in my read through them just now, for all of them, I could see a few aspects that aren't really precise about the specification. So some things where you're going to have to use your judgment to figure out what it really wants you to do. So the most obvious one is this another currency business, um, but also things like prompt the user. Now, we don't know how to do that yet. And of course, ChatGPT doesn't know that, so it's asking us to prompt the user. We're going to have to come up with something that's equivalent. Maybe we don't want to learn how to prompt the user yet. So I'll make three separate videos of me going through these exercises where I have to make those judgment calls. Um, and in cases where the prompt makes no sense, I might just have to fill in the blanks myself.